Mrs. Afton, William Afton's infamous wife. Almost nothing is known about her in the games, in the books, and yet she's married to the main antagonist in all of FNAF. Where is she? Is she still alive? Is she working with Afton still? Or has she got her own goals which she's carrying out behind the scenes? Well, the truth may actually shock you. So strap yourselves in because we're going to find out what really happened to Mrs. Afton. As we know, Mrs. Afton had three kids with William Afton, the crying child, Mike and Elizabeth. Now, during the bite of 83, they're all relatively grown up with Mike being the oldest and being a young teenager. So we can easily assume that these children were conceived prior to the events of 83 and during the events of Fall Fest in 1970. The ages would then line up. But come 1983, 87 and 1993, she's seemingly nowhere to be seen. So what actually happened to her then? Did she die or is she still alive? Well, we know from evidence at Sister Location, now Sister Location's placement in the timeline is quite controversial and is all over the place, but I believe I solved it and I have a video on that here which goes into depth. Now for any Game Theories fans you would know that he's obviously referring to Sister Location and where it's placed in the timeline. Now I'm not going to go into depth in this video, we're just going to say that Sister Location takes place between 1985 and 1987 and as we know we play as Michael Afton and when he finishes job goes home and he watches a TV show and this TV show is called The Immortal and the Restless. That is already a massive play on words. But let me continue to explain. In the lives of Vlad and his dis Stressed mistress. Where will they go? What will they do? All of that and more happening now. Now in this TV show that Mike watches, there's four main characters. The narrator, Vlad, who is clearly Michael Afton, Clara, who's clearly Mrs. Afton, and Vlad and Clara's baby, which at this stage could be Michael Afton himself. Vlad is obviously depicted as an immortal vampire, he wears purple, William Afton is obviously immortal, wears purple. But the main point of me bringing this up is the fact that Clara in the story is alive. Well, you could easily say that this is depicted when Mike was a baby, and this could easily be 1970, 1975. And of course it would depict her having been alive because she has to have another two more children after Mike. So that doesn't make sense, right? Unless the baby in her arms was obviously the crying child, which would make it a bit more plausible with her then leaving pre the bite of 83 and gives evidence that she was alive prior to the events of 1983. But what happens to her after that? Well, it only gets crazier and crazier, so let's continue. Now, as I said, Mrs. Afton and William Afton likely would have met during the events of Fall Fest, or at least when he was working with Fall Fest, and Fall Fest we know was a circus. Mrs. Afton Afton likely would have worked at that circus for them to meet. And what would she have done at that circus? Well, potentially a dancer. And is there anybody we know who's a dancer? That's right, Ballora. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you think Ballora is Mrs. Afton, let me continue to explain. Now, in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, we obviously see a rendition of the Afton family. William Afton, Mrs. Afton, and the kids around the table, all as staff bots. But what is extremely interesting is that there's deleted lines of dialogue specifically related to this scene. Scene. And this dialogue is from the William Afton staff bot to the Mrs. Afton staff bot, and it reads, I'm home. You're home early. I quit my job. What about the children? We have a down payment on a new closet. I do not know what I was thinking. I was compelled to leave my post. This is no longer working. I'm leaving. Now that snippet right there tells us that he'd quit his job and her main priority was the children and she'd left him. This gives us a timeline on events as well because we know in FNAF 2, Phone Guy says, we're going to try and contact the original restaurant owner. Uh, I think the name of the place was Fred Biz Family Diner or something like that. Yeah, we're going to try to contact the original restaurant owner. Uh, I think the name of the place was Fred Bear's Family Diner or something like that. And that's what he says. Now, that was 1987, and he implies there the original restaurant owner, not owners, owner, indicating that at that time, Henry was the only owner. So in 1987, William was not part of the business. And we know he was still part of the business after the bite of 83, so she would have left him in the period between 1983 and 1987. And the likelihood is she took two of the children with her. Well, one of them anyway, because we know Elizabeth was with her father in sister location, and Mike was nowhere to be seen. Mike could have gone with his mother, changed his name, Name to his mother's last name, Schmidt, rather than Afton, because after they left, she had a divorce, she changed her name from Afton to Schmidt. Hence why Mike says he is Mike Schmidt in 1993, when we play as him during the events of the original Five Nights at Freddy's location. So we now know she's separated from her husband, she changed her name back to Schmidt, has custody of Mike, and William has custody of Elizabeth. And we all know what happens to Elizabeth in sister location. Which brings me on to my next point. Is Mrs. Afton actually in Ballora? Because as we know in Sister Location, Ballora gives off things which refer towards a family. Like she says, Why? 
which most likely would be in reference to William or even Mike himself. Mike shying away after basically killing his own brother. She also says, admit it, you wanted to let me in. Again, referring to Mike wanting to let his mother in to his room or whatever he is. And then she also says, into Elizabeth's room or Elizabeth's death. It almost seems pretty straightforward that Mrs. Afton could be in Ballora, right? Or haunting Ballora. But if that was the case, she'd have to be dead for it to haunt that object. And Sister Location's placement in the timeline, to me, is pre-1987. So would fit with the timeline placement, but did she die in going to Ballora? We know she probably would have been a tightrope dancer in Fall Fest in 1970. Ballora is a dancer. Her voice line seemed to fit Ballora. And I haven't even got into the Vanessa theory. But to me, that kind of debunks the she isn't in Ballora, or at least isn't related to Vanessa in any way. Now, during Five Nights at Freddy's security breach, you can come across the therapy session tips, basically, of Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. How are you feeling today? Where she's referred to as Patient 71. Now, the therapy tips actually say that Vanessa's father, called Bill, manipulated her into winning custody over her. And it's implied that Vanessa's mother also unalived herself because of that event. But there are some huge problems with this. Firstly, Vanessa's age. In FNAF AR, or FNAF security breach, she'd be well over the age of 23, and the security breach is set sometime in 2025 to 2030, meaning William Afton, or Bill would have had to have had Vanessa pre-2000, when we know he physically died in 1993 in the Springlock suit incident. Obviously because this tape suggested that her mother unalived herself in the connection with Will, William Afton, etc., people thought that Mrs. Afton was dead because of this event. But it just doesn't make sense and doesn't line up. And there's something else which I completely missed first time around. Remember when I said there was cut content for the Afton family staff bots and security breach? And I quoted it saying, he's home, you're home early. Well, there's another bit of dialogue at the end. When Mrs. Afton says this is no longer working, I'm leaving, William says do not go, indicating he does not want her to leave. He still loves her, wants her in the household. Mrs. Afton replies, may you be happy in the life that you have chosen. Now you may feel that is not important, but it is. It indicates that William didn't want his wife to leave him. So Ballora definitely would have been a tribute to his wife, whether dead or alive. You see, for William to put his wife in Ballora, he would need what? Her body, her corpse, her remnant? Surely and let's not forget that every single Afton death has been seen in game or in the books. William, we see him springlocked. The crying child, literally head bitten in Freddy. Mike gets scooped and burns in the fire of FNAF 6. Elizabeth, killed by baby. Every single Afton death is seen on screen, but Mrs. Afton's nowhere to be seen. And as you know, in the rule of show business, if you don't see them die on screen, they can always come back. So in reality at this stage, Ballora has Mrs. Afton's personality encoded into her. She's not possessed by her. It's William's tribute to her. He never wanted his wife to leave, so he built Ballora. Because we know Mrs. Afton would have took Mike, William would have had Elizabeth. Elizabeth perishes, Mike perishes. Afton's wife is now gone, leaving William all alone. He'd want to replace that void. Hence that's why he builds Ballora. It's not because she's dead, it's because she's out of the equation. She's moved. She's far away from William Afton. And the only evidence that she unalived herself was from these therapy CDs slash cassettes, which are from Vanessa's childhood, which doesn't line up in the timeline with Mrs. Afton. Her childhood trauma is similar to that of the Aftons, but it's not the same. And something that really makes me laugh is the fact that some people deny that she even exists. So what, William Afton just asexually reproduces like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park now? By the way, I have a Jurassic Park channel, you should definitely check that out. With Jurassic World having so many kept secrets, so many horror stories, which only came to light after the park fell. Now I know, I know, I know, you're probably thinking then, what actually did happen to her? Well, let's look at it from this perspective. If in 1983, the bite of 83, she was 30 years old, by 2003, she would be 50. And at the time of FNAF AR and FNAF Security Breach, which is presumably taking place in 2025, we know AR takes place in 2023, she would be 70 years old in 2023. So I know Matt Pat loved the theory that she was the head of Fazbear Entertainment and is now the one who's going to take over, yada, yada, yada. Her age doesn't fit that bracket unless, unless she knew about William's experiments with Remnant, potential of it 
eternal life. Which is what happened to Mike and to William Afton, let's not forget. Maybe she wanted some of that for herself. She wanted to become a mortal, like a mortal and the restless, like we see in Sister Location. I mean, Henry was able to find out all this information on William's experiments. Surely his own wife could easily do the same, if not already she knew about it. Which could potentially then give her the motive to make herself a mortal, bring back her dead kids, and potentially take revenge on Afton in the first place. Which then would align with her becoming the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment. She would be the only surviving director slash next of kin, and would fit perfectly with her plans, apart from one thing, taking revenge on William Afton. You see, Matt Pat says she wants to bring back her family, including William Afton. If she divorces him and leaves him like the law suggests, and the evidence tells us, why would she want to bring him back? She wouldn't. She'd want to make him pay and suffer for all the pain he put her through, the loss of their children. If she brought the children back, she wouldn't want him anywhere near their children. She wouldn't want a repeat of history. She could not lose them again. Maybe she is the next big bad villain all along. And based on the evidence, she's still alive. We've solved where she divorces William Afton, why potentially she couldn't have died anywhere in the timeline, and why she'd want to come back. The only big issue for me is that age. The only way we could see her again is if we have that overarching plot about her wanting to take the remnant and make herself a mortal. Which sounds like a bit of a stretch, but this is FNAF. We have time traveling ball pits, remnants, artificial intelligence and robot kids. Nothing is far-fetched in FNAF these days. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for plenty more content like this and the follow-up to this video coming soon. I'm Twisted from Twisted Animatronic and stay safe out there, superstars.